What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender tool tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use the inset tool to inset different faces inside of your model and also how you can use that to create different shapes in Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the simplest thing you use the inset tool for inside of Blender is for taking a face like this one and taking all of the edges and moving them in so that you can move something up or down on the face in order to add ridges or details or other things like that. Um, but the way that you're going to use this is you're going to select an object and you're going to go inside of edit mode. So you're going to click on the object to select it, tap that tab key, and then you're going to go into edit mode. And then within edit mode, you're going to select a face. So in this situation, for example, I'm going to type three and I'm just going to click on this top face. And so when I click on this top face, you can see how I just have the one face selected and if I type the I key just like this and I move my mouse you can see how this insets a face in from the perimeter so basically what it does is it takes all four edges and it moves them in and you can see how you get connected lines from the edges when you do this and so this also creates this as quad geometry so your shape stays uh, your shape stays with smart geometry in here that you can subdivide so you can see how you could use this in order to start um, adding detail to a face and so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second for now notice that when this pops up you're gonna get a menu of different options once you select this you can turn a lot of these on and off with uh, your keyboard shortcuts but notice how you can adjust the thickness of your inset by clicking and dragging this or by typing in a value. You could also type in a value with the tool active in order to customize the thickness of this uh, this inset. So for example, I could set this like 0.25. There's also an option here for depth. So if you use the depth option, what this is gonna do is in addition to insetting this in, this will also move this up or down by a value you dictate. So you can see how if I was to move this in and move it down, you could move this up or down like this, and you can see how the connected faces are adjusting to match, um, to match where this inset face is going. So usually what I end up doing with something like this is I don't end up using the depth function. What I end up doing instead is I end up using the extrude function. So if I was to tap the E key, for example, notice how I can extrude this down. So I can use this in order to extrude something in, in order to create a recess or something like that. So again, if I was to inset this and then extrude it back up, you can see how we can use this to quickly create different recesses and other things like that inside of our objects. And so I do want to point out that when you use the inset tool, and I'm going to extrude this up a little bit more, but when you, when you use the inset tool, notice how you get this menu up at the top with all of these different options in here. So remember how before um, we clicked in order to set this and then we set all of these options. You can also set a lot of them with, uh, with keyboard shortcuts. So like for example, with this tool active, I can hold the control key in order to set the depth in here so you can see how I can adjust the depth by holding the control key so you can also set some of these others that we're going to talk about in a minute like the individual faces but as a general rule what you're going to use this for is you're going to use this to inset faces kind of like this so you can see how I can do kind of a minor inset like this one then I could come back and I could uh, select all of the edge loops in here and I can extrude these in so you can see how again creating things like recesses get really easy with this tool and so one thing I want to point out about this is not only can you do this for an individual face, so that's what we were doing before, but now we're going to go inside of this object and let's say we wanted to inset faces on both of these. So let's say I wanted to select multiple faces like this, so do like a shift click in order to select multiple faces and then tap the I key. Notice how right now what's happening as I move this is these faces are all insetting but they're insetting based on the corner point so they're not insetting based on the center of the uh, each individual face. What they're insetting by instead is they're insetting based on a central point for all of these. So you can see how that gives us kind of a weird result. We can definitely use this for some stuff, but for right now, this isn't really what we're looking for. So what you can do instead is you can either um, check this box for individual with this tool active, or when you initially inset these, so when I tap the I key, 
To activate the tool, if I tap the I key again, you can see how this is going to put me in individual mode. Well, when I go in individual mode, what that means is that means that each one of these faces is going to inset by itself. So when I enter this individual mode, you can see how I'm going to be able to inset multiple objects based on their own individual center points. So let's go ahead and add a cube really quick. So I'm just going to add this cube. We'll scale it down a little bit and we'll move it over here. We'll scale it down a little bit more and we'll move it this way. So not only do you have the option to inset these faces in, you can see how right now with both these faces selected, you can see how this is insetting each one of them individually. Well, if I was to tap the O key, what that's gonna do is instead of insetting the face inward, it's gonna inset it outward. So it's gonna outset it down along this face. So you can see how I could use this in order to split this face by outsetting these top and bottom faces um, by tapping the O key. So this option right here, outset, is gonna allow you to do that. So you can use that in order to uh, inset these faces down like this. And this gets a little more useful on more complex shapes like this one, for example, but you can definitely use this in order to do that as well. So one thing I wanna point out with this tool we'll go ahead and get rid of this for right now, is it doesn't just work on rectangular shapes like these, it also works on more complex shapes. So for example, this shape right here has curves around the edges. But if I was to select the face, tap the I key, and we're gonna turn outset mode off, you can see how this is going to inset these faces in um, in the same way. One thing you need to be a little bit careful about is notice how if I inset this to a certain point, all of the different vertices cross. So that just has to do with the fact that because these are arcs around the corners, what this is doing is this is insetting these until it hits a central point and then they're crossing over each other. So be careful when you're doing stuff like that. You can definitely use this in order to add detail. Notice that these are all in here as quads. You could still extrude this in and uh, other things like that, but just be kind of careful with your corner details. And, and so another thing that we use this for is if we're using, if we're creating something, another thing we might use this for is if you were to subdivide the top of a shape like this one or a shape like this one, you can see how this doesn't give you very good details. It just kind of comes to a point. And part of the reason for that, part of the reason you get weird geometry is because your top face, we're gonna turn this back off for a second, isn't actually in here as quads. However, if I was to inset this, what you're gonna notice about it, and we're probably gonna wanna add an edge loop around the top, but notice how when I inset this in, this is actually coming in here, this is creating this, and all of these shapes are now quads. So if I was to add an edge loop here, we'll go ahead and select this, but we added an edge loop here. Well now, if we were to subdivide this, and take a look at it, and we'll go back into object mode. Notice that you're getting a lot smoother subdivision along the top. Your topology looks a lot better. So if I turn on wireframe mode, you can see how this looks a lot better um, around the top here because this is subdividing these as quads. So you're not getting this quite the same um, shape that you get over here. So you do get a lot smoother shapes. And so this could probably be more helpful. And we're gonna go ahead and go back just a little bit, but if you were to inset this in and then extrude it down, then inset it again, notice how you get this nice quad geometry in here whenever you do this. So you can see how again, as I inset this, and again, you'd probably need some edge loops around these edges to keep things from getting really nasty. You could also crease them if you wanted to. But because we use the inset tool in order to do this, we have really great geometry that's going to help us create a better shape. So notice if I use subdivision surface on this, take a look at it, I've got a pretty smooth profile in here because I was to use that inset tool. So you're gonna use this a lot for applications like this one. And so this will also work for more complex shapes like this one. So notice how at the top, Right now, this shape isn't actually um, rectangular or anything like that, but you can use this tool in order to inset this face in 
as well and up to a certain point right so if everything crosses you know you're not going to get a very good result but i can use this to inset this and start adding different recesses and other things like that and i can even scale them in once i do this right so i could extrude this either in or out and then scale them in order to start getting the result that I want. So you're gonna use the inset tool for a lot of things like this inside of your models. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. If you guys are interested, I can do some videos on actual applications of this tool. So things where this might make sense, where you might use this. Um, just leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.